Hi, I'm Debbie Mandel, and I work in the Lagoon at Kids Cove. Hey, my name is Eric Mandel. I work in the Pier with Children's Ministry. I've been working in Children's Ministry for 12 years, and prior to that time, I was sitting in church one Sunday, and there was an ad in the bulletin for various teacher positions in the children's ministry. And uh, as I was reading that, uh, I, we had two small kids at the time, two boys, and I was pregnant with our daughter. So I thought to myself, you know what? I think this would be a great position, but I'm not ready to do it just yet. So um, I went home that Sunday and didn't think anything more of it. Next Sunday, I came back and it was still in the bulletin. And this continued to go on for probably four to five weeks. And the Lord just kept tugging at my heart. And, you know, I kept trying to say, this is not a good time. And, uh, you know, once the baby comes, then I'll think about a position in children's ministry and helping to teach. Um, but week after week, all of the positions kept showing up in the bulletin. And finally, I, I went home and I said to Eric, you know what? I think I'm going to start. There is a position for nursery. How hard will it be to hold babies and make silly faces at toddlers? I'm like, I can do this. And you know, when the baby comes, I'll take a little bit of time off and, uh, and that's where I'm going to start. So I started in the nursery and then I think there was a need in the twos and threes class. And it worked out really well because at the time our son was two. So we were teaching with him. Um, and then eventually there was a need in the fours and fives, and that's where I've been in the lagoon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, I've worked in education pretty much my whole life, and the idea of serving on a weekend when I'm leaving education behind for the week was, I think, um, something that I wrestled with just because it was a nice break to finally get a chance to sort of unplug and relax and then grow in Christ through the different ways that we would enjoy through our church. And that was one of the great things about our church initially, not to go off topic, but the idea of there were so many different classes and we were young in marriage still. So one of the fun things we did was take marriage classes here. And it was an eclectic bunch, people of all ages. So you had this young couple listening to older couples who have been through the ups, the downs, and they would impart pearls of wisdom to us. So it was great and we got to know people but by being active, I think, in the church, you then start to feel uh, more a part of it. And then the one thing uh, that we have noticed is that in the bulletin, there's so many opportunities to serve. And in some cases, there's vacancies that need to be filled. And with the onset of our family beginning, um, we wanted to become more involved. And I think knowing that we had children, before we came to CEFC, one of the things that was challenging for us was finding a church. And one of the things once we had kids that was so important to us was children's ministry, clearly. And the different churches that we would go to, we would spend time in children's ministry trying to do something just to get a better feel for what's happening as opposed to dropping off and then going to big church or whatever else we were doing for that Sunday. And then here, I think just the welcoming that we first receive upon coming to the church was wonderful, but then I have to always go back to Miss Colleen. Um, for me, it was uh, an amazing experience getting to know her. And I know she's no longer with us and, and there may be people who don't know her, but she had this ability to help you see something that maybe you didn't even know existed inside you. And yes, I love education and I love children and working with children in all capacities and that's a calling for me. But I don't know that I initially thought Sundays here at church were gonna be something I'd be doing. And I think Colleen sort of helping me become more active in different volunteer capacities other than education, but still seeing her so passionate for children's ministry um, definitely got me more excited and look forward to the idea of possibly Sunday serving. And then with our own kids being that age, uh, we started out in the twos and threes I gotta say it was really fun to take a back seat to my wife working with the children and she would be the instructional lead and I would be the assistant. And that was wonderful because it was such a nice change from during the week, always being center on stage. But here I get to work with my wife, which was fantastic, but then watch her in front of children. And that was sort of a new way of seeing her that I hadn't seen before. And it's a, it was a great way for me to have a newfound respect um, a different respect than I had in other ways for her, but then also being very excited to see the talents and gifts she had 
and the idea of those were going to be imparted to our children once we started a family. So I think it was really just uh, the welcoming of our church. It was Miss Colleen getting me active in volunteering, seeing the passion in her and others. But then also once my wife started, I think I wanted to be a part of that, but also to see her in a different capacity was a lot of fun. So for me, one of the things I look forward to with serving on Sunday in children's ministry is um, getting to see the kids. I mean, so it's great getting to see kids during the week, but then on Sundays, you see them in a different capacity because you get to know them in a different way than you would during the week. Um, and, and I'm not saying the kids I see here at Sunday are the, the kids that I'm seeing with and working with during the week. That's not it at all. But it's a deeper level of understanding and getting to know each other here. And the idea of how I was brought to Christ was through my wife and it was completely unexpected and um, I fought it quite a bit so very much I sound like a little kid. <laughs> I'm fighting uh, against something that I really don't want or really don't want to do but the idea all of a sudden of getting to see kids who have questions or one of the best things was getting to see kids who knew the Bible better than I did. That was a trip because I feel like what a great way to model education is that, no, we don't have to be an adult to impart knowledge to others, to younger children. They can teach us, and that happens every day in our lives when we take time to actually stop and think what's happening. And so when I see kids and we're talking about a Bible story and then they'll bring something into it, I'm like, wow, I didn't think of that. Or I'm still working on memorizing scripture verse and whatnot. I'm not very good at it. But kids are wonderful, and so when we do our memory verses, I'm amazed at how they pick up things so quickly. So I think as far as what's something I look forward to coming to children's ministry each week, each Sunday, is yes, it's of course the children. I mean, why would I be there if I didn't enjoy working with them? But I feel it's the spark they have, and that spark continues to ignite my fire and my excitement in wanting to, one, be a church, but then to continue to grow in Christ. And for me, I'm a social learner. I really hate being by myself, isolated, trying to, you know, crunch scripture or whatever it may be. So children's ministry, you're surrounded by kids, you're surrounded by other passionate adults who want to serve. And so together, I feel like that's what provides me selfishly um, what I need to continue to feel like I'm on this walk, but um, on a path that I feel is, you know, Christ inspired. It's quite nice. And then there's always a quote that I remember that I feel like any kid that I come in contact with, I want them to feel this, is that every child needs at least one kid who's crazy about them. And so I want to be that adult. I want to be that exuberant adult who, you know, for whatever reason, that kid may be coming in kind of tired or whatever the case may be, but help light them up and then help them leave feeling closer to Christ. Yeah, I agree that the the kids are really what, what brings you to church every week and just the opportunity to um, teach them something new, but also what they're teaching you and what they're giving you, um, even if it's a challenge that you have to overcome. <laughs> I remember one Sunday, there was just one kid, um, every Sunday he would be dropped off and he just cried. He had that separation anxiety and every Sunday it was so hard to get him calmed down. And at the time in children's ministry, um, the class would go down and worship in a separate classroom. And um, I just felt maybe keeping that child in the classroom with myself and another assistant would be best to try to help him acclimate to the room and calm down. And um, we were trying all different kinds of techniques, um, trying to get him to just be distracted from the way that he was feeling and um, just turn a corner. And we were having the hardest time. And finally, I just looked down and there was a bucket of balls, plastic balls. And um, my assistant was moving around the room and trying to set up. And I, I just looked at him and I said, do you think you can hit that moving target? <laughs> and the tears immediately stopped. There was a huge smile. I knew that he played baseball um, because he had been a regular attender at the church. And he just took those balls and started whipping them at the teacher. <laughs> and from that Sunday on, he did not cry when he was dropped off. So it's those sorts of just scenarios that you're placed in where not only does the child end up feeling good, but it does so much for me to feel like, ah, oh, he can finally, you know, be comfortable in this atmosphere and he participated and it was just, 
it's exciting to see kids grow, mm. not only spiritually, but just in, in all different yeah. ways. So yeah, it, it's exciting to be a part of that. If you're currently thinking about serving, just do it. No time is ever gonna be the right time. Things are not gonna get better. Things aren't gonna get worse. Um, we were just talking about this with people in our life group mm. that when you understand what the Lord has provided to you and just the salvation that he gives, how can you not serve by giving back to him? Your, your heart is just so full that, you know, there are so many opportunities out there and whatever that opportunity might be, the Lord is just tugging on your heartstrings and letting you know that you have your own gifts and you, own, you have your own abilities and just do it. Just just reach out, open that door and do it. And I feel like that's that's what we did. The timing didn't seem like it was right, but um, yeah, I mean, yeah, you're always... we've been doing it for 12 years now and it's just, it's been a blessing to our family. It's been a blessing to our kids to have them part of the process <laughs> and, and seeing us um, serving and helping others. So it's- Hopefully. Yeah, well, I think they see it. <laughs> um, I think advice would be um, really just listening to the Holy Spirit um, for me is a big one. Um, as I've continued to walk in my faith, um, the Holy Spirit uh, becomes more and more of a consistent voice that I'm, that I'm hearing. So as you read the bulletin and you see an opening, uh, just ponder for a second, listen and see what the Holy Spirit's telling you to do or guiding you to do. Um, I think we all, when we go through the bulletin or we hear the announcements or whatever the case may be, when there's a need at our church, I feel that all of us um, have the, the Holy Spirit working in us, but sometimes we get distracted and we don't prioritize. And I'd say for anyone who's looking to serve or you're unsure, um, give it some thought and give it some prayer. What I'm saying is the different ways that I have served have helped me grow in this church and also the relationships with people. And that's what we're talking about in Church A Church Family. It's getting to know more and more people from a Sunday men's group to a Wednesday night life group to Sunday children's ministry to the other relationships we have, but we see each other in passing. A lot of those relationships have come from serving in different capacities. And so if you're at church and you're coming on Sundays, the advice would be, we talk about growing in Christ, but you know, uh, serving as well, serving our church and getting to know one another, um, building on that church family, really happens when you stop going to big church, or I shouldn't say that, you're going to big church, but maybe you're doubling up on services. So you attend big church, and then you serve in some other capacity. And I will say this, that's one of the nice things that I know our church does a great job of, is they know how busy some of the volunteers are, but they do make it a priority to make sure that we are growing in spirituality rather than just giving, 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 and we're really not getting something back from our church family. So they do good. Uh, they do a very nice job of trying to balance that. Um, but at the same time, for if you are looking to serve, it's a great way to meet people, um, to be able to continue to grow in Christ in ways that you may not even think were possible or even something that you thought you could do. And the other great thing about serving is Sometimes you're gonna fail. Um, maybe it's not what you are called to do, but you gave it a try. And then now you know that you have that off the list. I shouldn't do that again, but wow, look, there's another opening. I should go try this <laughs> and not be reckless in your approach clearly, but definitely I feel like listening to the Holy Spirit and then wanting to get to meet other people in our church family is a great way to do so through serving.